أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بلاه brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين we always begin by praising Allah and نشهد ولا إله إلا الله we testify that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah سبحانه وتعالى we send our love our greetings our salutations to beloved Nabi Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to his pious and his pure family to his companions and all those who follow his sunnah until the end of time may Allah bless us to be amongst them Amin والحمد لله الحمد لله we praise Allah we thank him for this the few days of Ramadan, may Allah accept all the acts of worship that we've done, our fasting, our salah, our charity, may Allah accept from us, count it heavy in our scales of goodness, may Allah bless us with the full blessings of this month of Ramadan, we have been given a Jumu'ah, um, this uh, holy day in the holiest month of the year, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us and make us all sinless, Amin. We continue, we had our series with Nabi, Musa, Nabi Isa, uh, what, Nabi Adam alayhi salam, the first man. We spoke about the first man, Nabi Adam, and we mentioned how Nabi Adam was ultimately sent to the earth, and Allah had given Nabi Adam a message in terms of this is the purpose of your life. Your purpose of your life as a Muslim is to worship Allah alone. To have a relationship with Him in this world, so that when you die, when I die and I meet Allah, I have a relationship with Him. If I neglect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't believe in Him, I don't worship Him, I don't or I even wa yadubila associate a partner with him, then my deeds become null and void. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also taught Nabi Adam after he committed a sin, and we said this is different between us and the Christians, the concept of tawbah and istighfar. Allah acknowledged that He created a creation that is weak, that will commit sin. None of us will escape sin. We will all fall into sin. That is part of the deal. However, the way to come out of sin is through tawbah and istighfar. And Allah will be always accepting of tawbah and istighfar. No matter how big the sin is, if the intention is to reform and to change, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive. The one sin Allah will not forgive, and this is in Qiyamah, it's very important to understand. When we say Allah will not forgive, the one sin He will not forgive is shirk. And the understanding here is on the day of Qiyamah. You see, if you live in this world and you make sin and you make tawbah, the hope is it's already forgiven. When you get to Qiyamah, it's not there. It's off the account. Alhamdulillah. However, those of us who don't make tawbah in the dunya, and we then stand before Allah with all our sins. Now Allah has the prerogative to forgive or not to forgive on Qiyamah. He can ascribe a punishment. And He guarantees that even the worst of sinners will get a measure of His mercy on the day of Qiyamah. Even if they didn't repent, so long as they didn't commit shirk. However, if someone stands before Allah, he died upon shirk. Then Allah says, this sin I will not forgive on the day of Qiyamah. And so, from the time of Nabi Adam... Nabi Adam and his offspring mates commit sin, committed sin. In fact, the one brother, Cain and Abel, Habil and Qabil, the one killed the other, there was murder. In the earliest days of humanity, there was murder. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all these things. So where did shirk come about? How did this start? And we'll talk now about the first, the first messenger that Allah has sent to mankind, the first destruction of a people and the beginning of shirk. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi says, and of course the story of Nabi Nuh alayhi salam, the Nabi وسلم, said that the period of time between Nabi Adam and Nabi Nuh was 10 centuries, a millennia or more. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would then send Nabi Nuh, who is the first messenger to a people, because they invented a brand new sin. The worst of sins was shirk, and they were the first people to do this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the start of shirk, Nabi Nuh's people. Allah says, Amittakhidu min dunihi aliya. Do you, have you taken... Besides Allah, other ilah, other objects of worship, kulhatu burhanakum, hatha dhikrum man ma'ya wa man dhukira min qabli. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah, in surah Nuh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to the people of Nabi Nuh, Allah says to them that they will never leave, or they say they will never leave, waddu, wa suwa'u, wa yaghutha, wa ya'uka, wa nasra. When Nabi Nuh spoke to them and said, what is it that you're worshipping? They said, we are worshipping wad. It's a name. And we are worshipping Suwa, and we are worshipping Yaghutha, and we are worship, worshipping Ya'uq and Nasra. Who are these people? What are these things? These are idols. Now who are these idols, and how did they get these names? And they said, we'll never stop worshipping these five idols. And in a commentary of this, uh, Ibn Abbas, the companion, he commentates on this, uh, uh, on this ayah, and he says that, the Prophet ﷺ informed him, that these five idols were the first objects of shirk on earth. 
These were the first things that were worshipped besides Allah. And these idols, these statues, who were they? How were they formed? They used to be awliya. In the generation before Nabi Nuh, they were pious men, awliya, scholars, ulama, very pious people. And the people would come to them to learn, to study. And when the Shaykh, the Mawlana, he passed away, the people felt very sad. And so they would visit the grave of these saints, the grave of these awliya. And they would remember their shuyukh, and it would make them feel a bit better, and then they would become better in practicing. Initially, they would ziyara the graves to be reminded about these pious people, and then they would go back home and they would reform their deeds. Then, shaitan saw the extreme love and the, the connection they had with these, the people had with these uh, awliya. So shaitan came to them and whispered in them, why do you have to go all the way out there? Why, do you, why don't you build on the grave structures? Make a mausoleum out of it. Respect the Sheikh, the Mawlana. Build a kramat, a mazar. And perhaps even go a step further and build a statue. So you don't have to end. Don't put the statue there in the cemetery. Put the statue in your homes and in your town square on the parade. So that whenever you walk by and you see what? And you see Ya'uka and you see Nasra, it will remind you of Allah. And when things get difficult, there's drought, there's a, a, a calamity. You all congregate, make dua to Allah, but in the presence of the idol, the statue. Because this place is Mubarak. And so with time, people began to slowly put emphasis and trust these statues protect us these statues protect us from calamity even in Cape Town may Allah protect we used to have the saying that we don't have natural disasters the karamats protect us this is incorrect only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us from from calamity and if the protection comes it is through the dua and the ibadah we make here the people reciting Quran the people fasting the people saying the karima that is where the protection comes from it is not through objects or people or graves or shrines that brings about protection even in our hajj class we said if you were to steal the hajr al-aswad the black stone and you put it in your car to protect you it's not going to stop the, the the thieves from stealing your car there's no power in the black stone and so with time people be put dependence in these idols in these graves and they started worshiping them and this be, this is the beginning of shirk this is the start of shirk so and subhanallah side note if you look at shirk this is shaitan's game plan 101 shaitan knows that people by their nature we would not worship something that we feel is inferior to us. And there's nothing greater than, than man. So, if you look at every religion, every religion that commits shirk, what do they worship? The Christians worship Nabi Isa. The African tribal religions, they worship their ancestors. The Hindus, they have statues mostly in the form of people. And these were what they call avatars. These were divine people. And so, we have this natural... This natural inclination, and shaitan has done this for many, many millennia. He gets us to revere certain personalities. We then become exaggerated in our love. We believe these people are special, and they have a special connection with the Creator. Now, also important when we talk about shirk, shirk is not the belief that there is other creators besides Allah. Whatever pagan religion you find, even the pagans of Arabia, Abu Jahl, they never said that the statue created the sun and the moon. No one is that crazy. No one built a statue and says, this is the creator of the sun and the moon. They believe these statues have a special link with Allah. And we are not, we are so dirty. We are so sinful. How can I speak to the Lord of the universe? And they use the analogy, you can't pick up the phone and phone the president or the CEO. You must go through his PA and through his, and these are our connections. These are our intermediaries. And so they begin to worship these intermediaries. And this is really the genesis of shirk. The Nabi Sallallahu when he was on his deathbed, um, when he was on his deathbed, he was surrounded by his wives. And two of his wives, Umm Salama and Umm Habiba, they were of, of the Sahaba that made the Hijrah to Abyssinia. Abyssinia was a Christian country at that time. And so while the, the wives are around the Nabi Sallallahu and they're chatting with one another, Umm Salama and Umm Habiba are now talking about the days in Abyssinia. They say, oh, you remember Abyssinia? Yeah, I remember those big cathedrals, how amazing it looked. And subhanAllah, it was like they built these amazing structures. The Nabi Sallallahu is laying on his, on his sickbed and he knows he's dying. And he takes a moment to say, then the Nabi Sallallahu says to his wives, this is Bukhari, he says, those people are the ones who built places of worship. They built masjids or churches on the grave of every dead, like Wali. Every time a pious person dies, we build a masjid on his grave who was righteous. And then they make in those masjids pictures and statues and idols of these, of these pious people. 
And eventually they start worshipping them. And he says, this hadith in Bukhari. These are the worst of creatures in the sight of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates this. That's why alhamdulillah, our masajid, we don't have any pictures in the masjid. We don't have any statues, honor. We don't uh, venerate any symbols or, or images. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that we worship. And so Nabi sallallahu is saying, we should not attach ourselves to these kind of, uh, of, of objects and ancestors and graves and kramats and mazars. This is not our religion. So now the people of Nabi Nuh are deeply entrenched in shirk. They worship these idols and they said, we will never leave them. These idols are the idols that protect us and give us strength and give us help. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to send a reformer, a reviver. And he sent his first messenger. Now, again, side note, there's a difference between a Nabi, a prophet, and a Rasul who is a messenger. A Nabi is anybody who receives a revelation. Nabi Adam is a Nabi because he received a revelation. After Nabi Adam was Nabi Idris, who also received a revelation. However, the elite of the Anbiya, the special forces of, of the Anbiya, the more advanced of the, uh, the higher uh, uh, tier of the Anbiya are called the Rusul, the, 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 the messengers. Why? Because the messengers will go to a people who are committing shirk. They're going to get opposition. They're going to have a hard time. The messengers have more difficulty. And we know that Nabi Nuh is the first messenger because in the famous hadith about Qiyamah, where people will go from one person to the next, they will say, speak to Allah, intercede. We all know the hadith. And the, and the Nabi says, nafsi, nafsi, myself, myself, go to this one. The first mankind will first go to Nabi Adam and said, you were the first, the first Allah created. Speak to Allah. He will say, no, not me. Go to Nabi Nuh. He is the first messenger. The first man that had to battle shirk is Nabi Nuh. So Allah says about Nabi Nuh, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ We sent Nuh to his people. And Nabi Nuh said, إِنِّي لَكُمْ نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ Oh my people, I am here to warn you. Allah has sent me to give you a warning. أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا اللَّهِ Do not worship anyone other than Allah. My brothers and sisters, you will read your khatams this month of Ramadan, inshaAllah. It is strange that sometimes when we read the whole Quran, we don't realize the single most central theme of the whole Quran. There's only, there's like if you were to extract one message, it's La ilaha illallah. That there is none that I should worship other than my creator. This is the ultimate theme. Every Nabi said the exact same thing, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. In Surah Hud, if you read Surah Hud, Allah mentions all the Anbiya that came. Nuh and Nabi Idri, Nabi, um, Nabi Salih, Nabi Shu'aib, one by one. And they say the exact same thing. They said, oh my people, what are you worshipping? La ilaha illallah. There is none worthy of worship at Allah. Then he says, Nabi Nuh, inni akhafu alaykum adhaba yawmin alim. I am here to tell you that you are on a path of destruction. I'm scared that you are going to get a painful punishment in Qiyamah. This sin that you're doing, Allah is not going to forgive the sin. فَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ So now the leaders, the community put us, they said, الَّذِينَ كَفْرُوا disbelief مِنْ قَوْمِهِ Of his people, مَا نَرَاكَ إِلَّا بَشَرًا مِثْلَنَا Nuh, we see you just like an ordinary Buddha like us. You want to elevate yourself. You say that you are special. Allah is speaking to you. You're crazy. Or you are a liar. وَمَا نَرَاكَ أَتَّبِعَكَ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ هُمْ أَرَاذِلُنَا And we only see the people following you are the, the worst from amongst us. The servants, the slaves, the poor. It is always the case that the first people to accept the message of Islam and the oneness of Allah are the people who are the lowest in society, the weak, the poor, the oppressed. And it's those who have the most to lose, the people who have status and power. They don't want the status quo to change. So the, 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 the CEOs, the politicians, the kings, they say to Nabi Nuh, we look at you and your people, you only have the scum of the earth following you. Why would we follow your religion? Uh, uh, we do not see except that the meanest among us they are followed uh, 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 that they follow you without thinking they are, they are uh, silly and we do not see in you any merit above us in fact we think all of you are liars so automatically the people of Nuh are rejecting him Nabi Nuh says to him, yeah, to them, وَيَا قَوْمِ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مَا لَا I am not asking you for money. I'm not coming here to get some reward or some money or payment. I'm purely giving you advice free of charge. إِنَّ أَجْرِي إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ Only Allah is going to reward me. وَمَا أَنَا بِطَارِدِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّهُمْ مُلَاكُوا رَبِّهِمْ وَلَكِنِّي أَرَاكُمْ قَوْمًا تَجَهَلُونَ And I am not going to ever push away a person who is sincere on Islam. So the, the chieftains said, okay, Nuh, maybe we'll talk to you, but you kick out of the masjid all these slaves, all these dark of skin people, all the poor people, the women, you throw them out, we need to be special. So Nabi Nuh said, I'm not going to do that. 
my religion, this religion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is not based on who you are and what color you have and how much you have in the bank account. I am not going to drive away those who have believed. Surely they are going to meet their Lord. But I see that you people are arrogant. You are arrogant. And who will protect me from Allah? He says, if I were to expel these believers. Nabi Nuh says to them, now, now, now comes the opposition. You're crazy, you're mad, you are charlatan. Do you say that you have special knowledge? He says, So many times, if you're a prophet, then come bring gold out of the ground. If you're a prophet, then bring the rain. So he says, I'm not saying that I have any control over the treasures of Allah. And I do not know the unknown. I don't say I'm an angel. And I do not say that these people that you look down on, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't be merciful to them. Allah knows best amongst what's in the hearts of people. And I am not a, a, a one that, that does wrong. Many times you the anbiya are asked, so now you show me, if you are a nabi, then show me, bring the rain, bring the money. He said, I don't have any control. I am a slave. And that is our religion. Our holy people. Awliya, Anbiya, they are slaves and servants of Allah. Whatever good comes from them is through Allah's blessing. Allah gives it if He wants and Allah takes it from whom He wants. Again, He gives a speech. He says, Ya O my people, Yaghfil lakum dhunubikum, wa yuakhirukum ila ajalim musamma. Turn back to Allah and He will forgive all your sins. He will forgive your sins and He will grant you success on the day of Qiyamah. Nabi Nuh, if you look at Nabi Nuh's story, it appears in the Quran, throughout the Quran, from Juz Amma, uh, sorry, from uh, Alif Lamim, until the 29th part of the Quran. The last we see of Nabi Nuh really is called Chapter Nuh. And the way the Quran is brilliantly set up, it's as if though Nabi Nuh is preaching from the beginning, from Alif Lamim, he's preaching, he's calling, he's calling, and they're rejecting him, they're insulting him. And he continues and he continues. And so, then we get the end of Nabi Nuh, he's mentioned in the Quran, is the surah of Nabi Nuh in the 29th Jews, after Surah Tabarak. So now he says, Qala Rabbi inni kawmi layla wa nahara. So now the whole time he's speaking to his people. In Surah Nuh, he now speaks to Allah. He says, oh Allah, I've called my people night and day. فَلَمْ يَزِدْهُمْ دُعَاءِ إِلَّا فِرَارًا But the more I speak to, him, to them, the more they run away. وَإِنِّي كُلَّمَا دَعُوتُهُمْ لَتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ Whenever I call them and I'm speaking to them, trying to reason with them, they put their fingers in their ears and they put their clothes over their head and they run away. وَاسْتَكْبَرُ استكبارا. And they act arrogantly, they abuse me, they insult me. I've been doing this for years, Ya Allah. For 950 years, I've been calling and preaching and reasoning with him. Then he said, Sometimes, Ya Allah, I spoke to them publicly. And I said to them, Make istighfar to the Lord. He's most forgiving. You see this sama alaykum with rara. When you make tawbah, he's saying to his people, Allah will send you more rain. And he will, he'll give you money. All of us, many of us here, we want money, we want more children, we want good. Nabi Nuh is saying, Make istighfar. Ask Allah to forgive you, He will give you money and He'll give you children, and He'll give you investments and farms, and He will open all the blessings of the earth. Just ask Allah for forgiveness. He's asking, He's like, You can hear the frustration. He says, What is wrong with you? Oh, people, what is wrong with you? That you do not fear the punishment of Allah. And Allah created the heavens and the earth. And Nabi Nuh is, 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 is continuously preaching. Allah said, He was preaching to his people a thousand years, except 50, 950 years. And his people rejected him. After 950 years, the ulama mentioned most likely, he only had about 25, less than 30 people. By our measures of standards, he was a complete failure in our measurement of, of a person that is going out. And that's why after every time he would convince a people, then someone amongst the elite would oppress them and convince them to go back to their sin. So then Nabi Nuh says, Oh Allah, he makes a dua. My Lord, leave not one of the disbelievers on the earth. We always talk about Allah destroying the people of Nabi Nuh. It was only when Nabi Nuh says, Ya Allah, I've had enough. I can't anymore. I have given up hope on my own people. Never does Allah destroy a people until the Anbiya, the Nabi of that people, says, Ya Allah, destroy them. 
When the Nabi throws in the towel, because these are his own people, these are his brothers, his sisters, his family, and he says, Ya Allah, there's no hope for them. I've given up on them. And he says, Ya Allah, do not leave a single person on the earth that disbelieves. If you leave them, they will mislead your slaves, and they will beget none but other disbelievers. Now remember, this was only one community, one small community. Nabi Nuh's people were just in a small valley or village. This was all of it. So he says, remove the disbelievers and inshallah, shirk will be eradicated like a disease and it will, we will continue back on Tawheed. So Allah then says to Nabi Nuh, Wasna'ad fulka bi'ayunina. Go and build a ship. And I'll teach you how to build the ship. And Every time Nabi Nuh would build this, you know, he's busy making the ship, the people laugh at him and says, Nuh, you've given up preaching and to carpentry now. You've become a carpenter now. And as they make fun of him, he says, Inna tasharu minni, you making fun of me, fa inna nasharuk minkum tasharun. And soon you will be the one, I'll be the one laughing. man wa yuhillu alayhi muqim. And we will know who it is that uh, uh, will get the torment. Hatta idha jaa amruna. So Allah says, when the time had come, Allah had given the command, وَفَارَتْ تُنُور And that the, وَفَارَتْ تَنُور That the earth cracked open, water gushed out from the earth, and the sky began to rain. And the water of the earth and the water of the sky began to join up, and the flood began. And obviously everybody was running to a higher and higher place, but the water is not stopping. Eventually the only place to go was in the ark, in the ship of Nabi Nuh, and the believers into the ship. Now we all know the story, and maybe it's a question to ask. We know in the Quran, as is in the Bible and in the, and in the Torah, that Nabi Nuh and his small group of people into the ship and the animals. Two by two, two animals at a time. Now we ask, how is all the animals of the world going in the ship? You know, and scholars, and alhamdulillah, one of the more t- contemporary scholars, Imam Alusi, he says, and makes sense, it doesn't mean that Allah caused the entire world to be flooded. This was only one single community. So think about a little village in a valley. And the only animals that were on that ship were the animals they needed to survive. They were going to be on the ship for a few weeks or uh, 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 a month or so. So this animals that was there was for them to survive. It wasn't all the creatures of the earth that was on the ship. It was just the creatures in that area. And that makes sense, inshallah. And there's nothing wrong with that interpretation. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends this flood. And anybody who's been in a flood, the rain doesn't stop. You realize how powerless you are. If the rain doesn't fall, or the rain doesn't stop falling, you realize who the Rabb is. You realize that our technology, our power, means nothing in the sight of Allah. And so eventually the flood comes, and all those who were not on the ship, of course, drowned. And eventually Allah says, وَقَالَ يَا أَرْضِ And Allah says to the, to the, to the ground, أَبْلِعِي مَا إِكْ Stop, hold back your water. وَيَا سَمَا أَقْلِعِي And you, O oh sky, hold back your, your rain. And the water was uh, 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 diminished by the decree of Allah, and His command was fulfilled. And وَاسْتَوَتْ عَلَى الْجُودِ And the ship of the ark, Allah says, it settled on a mountain called Judi. Where this mountain is, Allah alam, but most says it's in Turkey somewhere. But the mountain's name is the Mount of Judi. This is where the ark of Nabi Nuh was settled. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then allowed Nabi Nuh and his people to exit the ark. And so now, to conclude, this is the beginning of a terrible cycle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give mankind guidance. They will then take it and some will reject it and then they will invent shirk again. Now that shaitan knows how to get shirk going, he's going to start this again and again. And every time we're going to have a cycle of a community committing shirk, a Nabi being sent to fight that shirk, Eventually, they either accept or they disobey, and some of them are destroyed. And so Allah will speak about many civilizations that are going to be destroyed. The people of Ad and Thamud, the people of Shu'ib, the people of Nabi Lut. Eventually, almost all of mankind would be buried in shirk, and Islam would become almost extinct until Allah sends the reviver and the reformer, Nabi Ibrahim. We'll talk about him, inshallah, next week. Bismillah. Just a few announcements, quick, quick, quick. Um, our orphan program um, is Saturday, which is tomorrow. 400 rand to support an orphan, inshallah. One of the best uh, uh, acts that one could do in the month of Ramadan is charity, and the most deserving of. Of recipients of charity are, of course, orphans. So uh, may Allah bless you for those who have supported. And if those who can, you know, even a 50 rand counts, inshallah. We have our soup kitchen as well. And our uh, nightly program on the Islamic revival. For those, inshallah, who would like to uh, follow, you can join our WhatsApp line. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.